was your brothers and your daddy. But then God seems, sends persons and people to confirm your, potent, your potential. Now, 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 what messed me up, what messed me up, Penny, is that the people that confirmed his potential wasn't no big shots. Uh, they wasn't no big wheels. They didn't come with all of these credentials and these resumes. But, but if you look at the Bible, they were different because the Bible tells us what kind of people came. And, and Penny, they, they wasn't no ballers or shot callers. Matter of fact, the Bible says they were distressed, they were in debt, and they were disconnected. Uh, 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 they walk up in the cave, and they don't come with any kind of facades. They don't come trying to be somebody that they ain't. They say pretty much, David, we ain't nobody. They say, David, we just going to keep it 100. We're distressed. We're broke. And we bitter, but you are man. David, you are a guy. You are our captain. We're distressed. It's in your Bible. We're in debt. Broke is a joke. We're discontented. But you are our captain. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but, but that almost shouts my socks off. Because God is so awesome. He, he, he never sends the, the perfected and, and, and the polished. But God will send broken people to confirm a call on you. And this word is for somebody. This word is for somebody. Some of you right now, some of you right now are stuck and stagnant in a sinking situation because God has pronounced a calling on your life. And you feel like your calling ain't legit because the person that's talking about it ain't about what you think they ought to be about. Say man, somebody, right now, you got folk right now, you should be walking in your anointing. You should be walking in your greatness, but you're struggling and you're crawling because you're waiting on somebody major. To validate you. You ain't no some association and some national convention and, 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 and some authority. You're waiting on somebody, big shot, to confirm you. I mean, you know, uh, 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 we feel that, okay, if I'm going to be like Jake's, then somebody like Jake's should have to confirm me. It's got to be somebody prominent. It's got to be somebody with a major position. Uh, it can't be nobody with 10 members. It got to be a mega church pastor. Come on, say amen, somebody. And many times, I don't know who I'm talking to, but many times we miss what God has for us because we feel that we got to wait to who we feel is the right person to confirm us. And God sends us who we think is the wrong person. Who's the inadequate person? Don't nobody know Brown. Don't nobody know Penny. How they gonna tell me that I'm the head and not the tail? How they gonna tell me I'm a CEO? How they gonna tell me they see greatness in me? Don't nobody know them. They inadequate. You got nothing to write home about. But first of all, let me say, you got to know. You got to know who called you. And you got to know who you are. This is my testimony. I ain't talking about nobody. Some folks might get mad, but it's the truth. And one thing I like about the truth, it's still the truth whether you like it or not. But when I was coming up, we had the district, association, state, national, and, and, and even locally. I remember in locally, in our district, uh, you were confirmed as a special preacher or somebody on a fast track. The way you were confirmed as a young person is if they ask you to do the district revival. If they ask you to be the BYF guest speaker, you're going to be the next somebody. And that's why you received a lot of local invitations. That's how they determine. And, 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 and they said those opportunities, uh, that, that exposure, would place you in circles uh, uh, and cliques to get you to the, level, the next level. But, but I've never been about the cliques. I've always been about Christ. Say amen, somebody. And, and so... Even though I've been preaching since I was almost able to stand up as a kid of 12 years old, I never sat around waiting on nobody to confirm me. I never sat around begging and trying to plead, please let me do the revival. Please throw my name in the ring. Because let me tell you something. You had folk 
who were sitting around here missed their blessing because they're hoping that they get called to be the evangelist of the week for the four or five hundred for BYF. But see, what they didn't know is that I knew God and what he called into me. And God had called into me a special level of anointing. And he had poured a vision into me. And because I listened to God, I went three hours up the highway. And instead of having the four or five hundred I could have been waiting on, God gave me several thousands. Twenty years straight, he gave me something called youth quake. Hundreds and hundreds of young people, every race, every ethnicity, white, black, Latino, African, they gave their life to God. Had I sat around and waited on y'all to confirm me. And God showed. He showed up and he showed out. I'm just thank God that I didn't sit around pinning waiting on the phone to ring because I'd still be waiting. But I was away from here in the same state, y'all. In the same state, people were talking. I was up here at Faith United, Faith House all by myself, and, and I had Crunk for Christ happening up here. And we had busloads coming from all over the place. It grew so big that we had to rent pretty much the whole park and the community center. And people was like, how can Brown draw all those young folk up there in O'Fallon? And we still got the three or 400 down here in BYF. It wasn't about BYF and it wasn't about Brown. It's because I was walking into the calling that God had for my life. And it grew to the point that we couldn't even accommodate. We had drum line. We had chartered buses. We had young people coming from all over. The, the church was jam-packed because I walked in my calling, and I ain't wait on nobody to confirm me. Because as long as God confirmed me, I'm good. So, 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 I want to say to somebody, listen. Many times you miss it because you're waiting on the person you feel is right. But let God do it. So David shows up, chapter 16. He gets anointed in chapter 16 to be God's first selection for the king of Israel. Now watch this flow. Watch this flow. Chapter 16, uh, selection of Israel. In chapter 17, he kills Goliath. In chapter 18, he jukes the jealous javelin of Saul. In chapter 19 through 21, he's a fugitive on the run. But at the end of chapter 21, he plays crazy to stay alive. But at the opening, don't miss this, at the opening of chapter 22, the distressed, the in debt, the discontent, they say, you're our captain. Don't miss this, y'all. The cave of Adullam is the bottom. This is the first time. Please don't miss this. The cave of Adullam. It's only in the Bible because this is the first time since David's ordination that somebody has confirmed his call. Preach, Pastor, if you got to about yourself. Listen, y'all, nobody started following David until he was in the cave, until he was at his worst moment, which meant that God confirmed David's call on his life during the worst time of his life. I don't know who you're talking, I don't know what you're looking at, but let me tell you, beloved, when you're at your lowest, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because that is the exact time when God will turn that thing around and many times God will send the people that you would have been the last and the least expected to do it. Preach, Pastor, if you got to all by yourself. The worst time, David's devil is a liar. This screen going, the devil is a liar. The worst time, and it's the first time that his life began to look anything like his calling. Whatever you're doing, just hold it right there. Don't touch now. We, we good. Uh, 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 listen, y'all, don't miss this. Up until this point, 
up until this craziness, up until these catastrophic circumstances, up until this, 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 this brokenness, what nobody following him. Sometimes God will wait until the worst time of your life to confirm the call on your life. And I don't know about y'all, I'm trying to keep it together, but, 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 but my socks are about to shout off, y'all, because God will use, Peter, he'll use the worst people to give you the right confirmation. Come on, say amen, somebody. God will use who you think is the wrong crowd for the right confirmation. I mean, check it out for yourself. There are 100 to the core. It said, D, we don't have nothing to offer you, bro, because we broke. Then we stressed out, and then we're discontented. Bro, we don't have nothing to offer you. We're broke, stressed out, and discontented. Now, 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 the word discontented right there in the Hebrew, it is translated that we are bitter in spirit. However, despite how tore up from the floor up we are and how jacked up our lives are, we still see God's hand on your life. Here it is. We weren't in chapter 16 at the ordination and at the, all, at the oil pouring ceremony, but we're in the cave now to say the same thing to you that God said to you in chapter 16. Let me tell you, I don't know, to, let me tell y'all, some of y'all right now, you're missing your blessing. Don't you go out here and miss your miracle because you're judging a book by its cover. I don't know who this word is for, but it's for somebody. Stop waiting on perfect people to make you legitimate. People that you think that are perfect that make you too legit to quit. Because God will send a misfit to fit you into the miracle that was meant for you. Say amen, somebody. They know no matter how it looks because we see what God said about David. They know that when they submit to David's leadership, they will not remain in the same state and the same status that they're in. And let me say this, y'all. I got to wrap it up. I only got about seven more minutes. But let me say this. You ain't truly great until you can make somebody else great. Mm -mm. You're not truly great until you can make somebody else great. Michael Jordan, arguably, in my opinion, the greatest, ain't no other GOAT, is Michael But his earnest was the main. Just hold what we got. We had to just stay there. Michael Jordan, his earnest was the main. But what made him great with an ultimate G in basketball is that he was able to take players who were not superstars and make them super. If you great all by yourself, that ain't a sign of greatness. That's the sign of you being an island. Say amen, somebody. When we see two three-peats by the Chicago Bulls, they never had a true superstar center, but they had mediocre guys who were made to become champions because Michael played to their strengths and the abilities to maximize their roles. So, so understand, getting ready to go what God has for you. God is going to send folk who, first of all, care for you as a person, and then he's going to send folk who will confirm your calling and then, part three, next week, he's going to send a circumstance where you got to change your partners. So point one, God will send somebody to confirm you, your person, not your position. Then 
He will send somebody. It might not be your somebody, but he'll send somebody to confirm your calling. And on next week on part three, he will cause you to change your partners. I'm done. I'm done. I hope that you were blessed. I hope that you were blessed. And that's why I want you to come back to church because it didn't take a whole lot to say a whole lot. And at the time that it took, it's what was said in the time that was given. And so right now, I want to encourage you. Understand, don't you walk around here and not walk in your calling, not walk into what God has for you because you feel like some association or, or, or some elevated position person in, in, in a certain place has to confirm who you are. When God confirms you, I've never been in cliques. People say all the time, when you see Brown, he's by himself or he's with his church family, his family. But, 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 but I've never been a person that felt like I had to run in circles. And had I been doing that, I'd have still been running in circles. But because I knew when God called me, because I knew when God ordained me, I was not going to be the traditional preacher that sat up in the pulpit and waited to read the scripture or do the morning prayer. I knew that if I would just walk in what God called me, and when I walked in my calling, God took eight over a thousand and gave us Save Our City Crusade that went all over this nation, transforming this nation that there was a good side to the east side. God took a program called Youth Quake that started with 8 to 10, went over thousands of all ethnicities. God sent Crunk for Christ, which drew young people from all over. God sent 10 national award-winning gospel stage plays and counting. God sent four books and counting. God sent the faith house and counting. It's all because I never forgot who called me. I never forgot who confirmed me. And I didn't have to look to nobody but God. I didn't have to look this way or that way. I just kept on saying, I will lift my eyes to the hills from which coming to my help because all of my help coming from the Lord. And I tell you, every step and every move that God has blessed me to make is because I walked in my calling and I didn't look for nobody else to confirm it because when God does it it's done we got the teacher to say it God said it I believe it that settles it that's so inadequate because when God said it that settles it whether you believe it or not that's on you and that's the way you got to be whether you believe what God called me to be that's on you but because of God said what God said and I know that it was settled I settled into what he said, and the rest has been glory and victory for him. As I go off the air, if you're out there today and you do not know God in the pardon of your sins, let me tell you, you don't know God in the pardon of your sins right now. There is no jumping through hoops that you've got to do. It is very simple. Romans 10 and 9, there's a dotted line. God says that if you will confess with your mouth, and believe with your heart that Jesus died and got up from the grave. He said you'd be saved. So right now, all you got to do is say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I'm tore up on the floor up. I know I ain't worthy. I know I ain't perfect. I know I ain't close. I know I can't never get there. But I do know that you've given me an opportunity. And so God, right now from this point, I want to give my heart, I want to give my mind I want to give my soul to you. I don't want to keep on living like I've been living. God, I want to be saved right now. I don't want to wait another hour, not another second, not another minute, like smoking off. For I need you now. Tell him you need him now. And when you say that, beloved, you shall be saved. Not tomorrow, not the next day. You shall be saved right now. Once again, Pastor Willie Lee Brown from the Faith House, Faith United Baptist Church, located 112 West Washington Street in the heart of the beautiful suburb of O'Fallon, Illinois, where we love to worship, we love people, but most of all, we love to praise God. Got a few more weeks here, and on September 13th, we want you to come join us live. Social distancing, all that's going to be observed. I want you to come into the house of the Lord. Let go and let God. 
As we go off, if the Lord has put something on your heart to sow into the seed of this ministry, please do. Most churches will tell you this has been one of the most stressful, straining seasons ever for churches, especially small and middle-sized churches. Because a lot of people, they have so many other responsibilities. But the responsibilities of the church don't stop just like they don't stop at your house. They don't stop at the Lord's house. And when you come in September, I want you to have lights. I want you to have air. But in seriousness, God says, give, and it shall be given unto you. That's how you get, by giving. You can't beat God's giving because generosity is a process of reciprocity. So there are several ways to give. You can go to our website, www.faithhouselive.com, and go to our giving segment, and you can pay by PayPal. Or you can mail it, 112 West Washington Street, O'Fallon, Illinois, 62269, to our finance ministry. Or on Saturdays, we'll put out a, a little note when people will be at the church to physically take whatever you give. But one thing about it, at this house, know that everything in this house goes to meet the needs of the storehouse. My friend, remember, God will, just like David, he'll send folk to, gonna, to, to be there for you as a person, care for you as a person, not your position. Then he'll send people to confirm your calling that he gave you. And last, there'll be another part three, that God will have you change partners as you go on into your journey. God bless you. Father God, thank you once again. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. God bless you and see you on Tuesday, Tuesday night for Tuesday Teach Time where we dive into the deep of this text. Until then, may God bless you. May God keep you. May his ever-loving arms forever be around you. God bless you.